So Microsoft has finally brought the Linux kernel in-house and baked it into Windows 10. Or have they? I don't know. Next Insider build, we'll actually get to play with this. But I watched all the videos, all the press kits that they have, and the things that they've done on this. And I gotta say, it's interesting. So first off, let's go ahead and kill this rumor right off the get-go. Windows is still Windows, it's still using the Microsoft kernel. They haven't integrated and started using Linux kernel stuff in the MS kernel. None of that crap has happened. All this is, from what I can tell from the videos, is them taking some features that Windows completely lacks and kind of tacking it on uh, by using a Linux kernel on top of the Microsoft kernel. This isn't really that big of news. A lot of people are making it more than it is because the Linux subsystem for Windows has been out for a long time. I did many videos, actually some of my very first YouTube videos were over this. And all it is is a Windows app in right now. In these days and all the early releases of Windows 10, all they've done is basically remove the Windows Store component of this and baked it into command prompt from what I can see from the videos to where you're sitting at a C prompt, you can go ahead and type bash, it'll drop into the Linux kernel, and then from there you can run all the Linux commands. However, this isn't a direct one-to-one, -one. it kind of reminds me a little bit of how Wine runs for Windows apps for Linux, because they have stated there's several things that don't work quite right, uh, Ruby Gems, uh, MySQL doesn't quite work, and then Top, as far as hardware and process monitoring using the Linux kernel does not work quite right. So I, it looks like just a complete compatibility layer where it's taking those calls and, and transforming them using the Linux kernel on top of a, a Windows kernel. I, I'm not quite sure how it all will end up playing out. If I have any ideas about this, I would say Microsoft will find a way to make this a buggy mess as they always do. But at the same token, I can kind of appreciate it as far as things they've brought outside of the bash prompt, they have put in SSH, native SSH, into Windows CMD. This is interesting because one of the big things I love about Linux is just doing SSH directly there or SCP commands. There's a lot of things Linux offers that Windows does not. I have to use PuTTY and other third-party tools. So. Will this eliminate that? I don't know. I mean, anytime Microsoft first does these tools in their last couple updates, it made me really kind of jaded towards this. I really hope they do a good job with this update, but uh, usually a first run at it by Microsoft, it usually in, in disaster. It takes a while to refine it, especially at such a large company. We'll see, I, I don't know, but again, I don't have high hopes for this, but at the same time, I do really like this direction of actually adding these tools in Windows. Is dropping to a bash prompt without having to launch a Windows Store app is kind of nice. You can just do it right from your CMD. And then also doing SSH without having to download PuTTY, also a big deal. Other quality of life improvements is Windows Terminal. Um, I saw that they're kind of revamping it, which is kind of interesting because, you know, there's CMD and PowerShell right now in Windows. Seeing them bring that in and, and kind of giving a unified experience through a Windows kernel terminal would be pretty sweet. But they did say in this that, again, it is not emulated. It is not a virtual machine. It is just directly uh, straight native performance is the exact words they used. However, it is just another Linux kernel or at least slightly modified Linux kernel uh, running uh, Ubuntu's take on it. So I, I don't know on this. Uh, they have been working with Con Canonical to make this happen. We'll have to wait and see. But again, I don't want to get everybody's hopes up on this. A lot of people are making this more than it, what it is. It is very much Microsoft tacking this onto a Windows kernel. It's nothing that is expanding the Microsoft kernel and bringing some of that Linux code in-house to Microsoft. You know, maybe in the future, why I kind of like this direction is I would love to see Microsoft just completely ditch their closed source kernel for Windows and switch completely over to a Linux open source kernel. 
this is total pie in the sky, never going to happen, not in a million years, but at the same time, one can dream because it would save them a ton of money. It would be far less buggy than what we get in Windows. However, the reason why it'll never happen is compatibility. The whole reason why most people still use Windows is because, well, there's locked in all these programs and things, and forcing all these programs to be compatible with a Linux kernel basically takes away their entire market share. They'd have to pretty much just not care about the desktop anymore. And say what you will about Windows 10, they may not have made a crap ton of box sales and made a killing on it. However, they do make a heck of a lot of money on search revenue just because by default, Windows 10, when you're typing in, hey, what's for dinner? Or what's the best food for chicken? Or whatever it might be, you know, just nonsensical things. It'll go ahead and just pull up whatever it is using Bing in their search engine and there's a chance you're going to see an ad or two and they're going to get paid every time that happens. So as you can imagine, they have made a lot of money on Windows 10. They are not abandoning Windows 10 or their Windows kernel anytime soon. I, I just don't see them ever abandoning it because that's just such a huge market share right now. Uh, again, they have lost market share steadily this past bit. I'm really looking to see Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD, all of these gain market share this upcoming year. I think that's happening already. The figures show that. So uh, be on the lookout for what's going on. Also, uh, I've already kind of covered this in a past video. I'll go ahead and link it up here. But Windows 10 update 1809 and 1903 has just been a complete dumpster fire. Uh, 1809 was deleting user files. It's still not up to snuff and it's been almost six months later. I had a lot of audio issues. I have a streaming PC where I set everything up on and my mixing board could only get pushed audio to when I push audio out to the actual computer. It was unable to actually receive the audio and by downgrading it to 1803 or 1709, both those versions did work. So kind of interesting to know that they still are running into a lot of bugs, even on stuff that has been out for six months. And these are full on feature releases. So if I was Microsoft, I would worry less about adding these types of features and start killing some of these bugs because right now we're seeing a lot of users think about Linux and switch to Linux just because they're fed up with a lot of the shenanigans and just outright bad quality from most of these updates. I don't understand how you can go through uh, this entire Q&A and Insider and just not fix these bugs or know about these bugs and then push it out the door. Microsoft is somewhere, it must be written in stone, that they have to do a feature release every six months and they should stop this practice because the last two feature releases are very bad and we can only delay updates for business and other things for about a year and a half by default. So by doing that, you know, we're coming up to where if we have three bad feature releases right in a row on Windows 10, uh, anybody that's using updates on Windows 10 is going to have a broken system soon or at least one that doesn't work that well. It doesn't work as well as it did two years ago. So it, it just kind of nonsensical to me. A lot of people have had tons of issues with these feature updates. So I really hope they slow down, take the time. So they've already done 1809 and 1903 i'm really hoping i guess 1909 would be the logical number for the next feature update they take the time and do this right and not worry about pushing in a whole bunch more features from linux and stuff they can go ahead and do that as a side project but i really hope they focus on the bugs here because if they don't this is just going to be a tragedy and i have to deal with windows on a daily basis through business and I really don't want them to screw up three feature updates right in a row. Uh, I know it'd be fine for what I do, but I do know a lot of small businesses that will be hurt drastically by this. And I really don't want to see that. I don't want uh, to see Linux succeed just because Microsoft fails. It's just my opinion. I think you know they, they can continue doing what they're doing. And I, I truly believe if Linux just keeps on its path, everyone will win here. It'll be fine. So please don't take this as, hey, Microsoft's failing and they're gonna die. I just really hope they dot their I's and cross their T's on this next feature update. 
and it's going to include some Linux functionality. I am looking forward to native SSH in Windows CMD. I will use that because I, who likes launching another program just to do SSH? That's silly. Uh, at least coming from Linux now for the past six months, I have enjoyed that aspect of it. But what do you guys think of this? Let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll see you on the next video.